All right, what's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We are gonna be taking a look at ticker symbol TKAT. This is Tycoon Art, all right? Now this one was a viewer request from the comment section. So if you have any requests for a ticker you want me to analyze, or some um, you know strategies, tutorials, anything like that, let me know in the comment section down below. We're gonna hop straight into the video and I'm gonna break down a few things um, on the daily chart and the one hour chart for you guys, all right? We're gonna look at the current price action and see why it's doing what it's doing. And then we're also gonna, um, you know, by the end of this video, you're gonna look and see where we could, uh, you know, our newest price target and our new highs and where we could go. Uh, potentially on this one. All right. It's showing a lot of good signs. We're seeing a lot of nice uh, volume stepping in. Um, you know, these, this is going to be the volume here. Okay. There was a lot of volume here and then that volume died off. Okay. A lot of times when this volume, when this massive buying volume comes in um, volume, whether it's on the buying or selling side, when it's massive like this, um, it's, you know, it, you're going to need to increase and have a steady high amount of volume to keep that trend going. And then once that volume disappears, you'll see it slowly, uh, return. So, you know, see really rapid rise up, die off in volume, slow, gradual decline. All right. Um, these ovals, I'm going to indicate to you, this is a low here. Okay. So let's just say that this is our uh, highest low and then boom, this is our next highest low. So we're making lower highs, right? But on the RSI here, we have a high and then we have a higher high. So even though we're making, um, you know, lower highs on the stock chart, right? On the price action, we are making higher highs um, on the, uh, you know, RSI. So, you know, that's, that's something that is uh, known a little bit as bullish divergence. It's an indicator that we could see some bullish momentum in the future, and it could carry out um, further bullishness, right? And, you know, a lot of you may be asking why. Well, I'll show you why and how right here. Okay. So look, if we draw this right here, this is now a trend line for us to get rejected on, all right? So now we have this trend line to take us past the green line on our RSI, which is uh, typically the overbought section, right? So that's why I have it in green and um, you know over oversold here in red, right? This is what most people use the RSI for. Now, if we extend this drawing to the right, okay? And let's do that and let's bring our chart over we can see now in the future, okay, if we drop back down in the future, if we make it past the overbought um, indicator on the RSI, we have this trend line gradually growing up and growing up, you know, from here, it's at 72, 73 area. And then over here, it's all the way up to 75. So it gives us more room on the upside to, uh, you know, to keep going basically. All right. Now we'll zoom in a little bit more and we'll look at some of the uh, current price action on the chart. All right. Up here. Um, and we'll go over the green and red boxes. Those are my supply and demand zones. And um, the way that these work, okay, is um, there is what's known as a uh, the markets work in, in demand and supply, okay? Uh, so when there's a demand imbalance, right, what this means is that there's more buyers at this price level, at these price areas, at this point of interest, than there is sellers. So the, the, the demand pressure, the buying pressure, there, it creates an imbalance and causes the price to go up. And then in these zones right here, these supply zones, there's a supply imbalance where there's more sell orders in the market at this price levels and, and at these price actions, right? Whether they're passive sell orders or whether they're, uh, you know, active sell orders, right? Um, you know, so this is these are areas where you're going to come and see the price come up to these areas. And then that imbalance from the uh, supply is going to bring it back down. Now we have a major support level here at 313 that we kind of need to hold right in between these two zones for us to keep this bullish activity and bullish momentum going up. Um, you know, again, we'll zoom out a little bit more and um, it's, you know, we're not in the true stages of a reversal. This thing has been bleeding and bleeding. We saw that the highs, uh, if we look here, uh, highs were like 75 of this stock. All right. Uh, if we zoom out here to the weekly chart, you can see 74.33 or 74.11 and it's trading at 391 right now. So uh, I definitely wouldn't say it's at a, any uh, reversal, you know, any, any, you know, for sure, long-term reversal, um, you know, but we did, we are battling this daily chart supply zone. If we look back in there, um, you know, that's, that's the levels that we're battling currently. And 
I think we can get past them. Okay. We need to hold this level right here. 313. As I said, as a main support level, um, you know, the RSI has some room to drop. It probably could drop here soon. Um, and we, we could see some more selling pressure, you know, even if it comes back up into here, but we really want to hold support at 313. And if we don't, we're going to come back in, in, in here into our demand zone um, and probably consolidate a little bit until we bounce and that demand and that buying pressure steps in and takes us further. All right. Well, so we're going to look at the one hour chart real quick because I told you guys, you know, we're going to look at the price targets of where it can go next. And we're using the Fibonacci levels right now. OK, so um, what we do with those is we have our swing highs and our swing lows of the chart. So we're using the one hour chart for this one in particular. We're going to zoom in a little bit and it'll give you the percentages of, um, you know, the Fibonacci percentages next to the lines. All right. So if we look here, we have our 78.6, we have our 61A and we have our 50, uh, 50%. But it means that if uh, off of this high, so what that means is if we would have bounced right away and found support at the 78.6 level. We would have been in what's known as a very strong uptrend. Okay. That would have been a strong uptrend if we would have bounced there. If we would have bounced here at the 61.8%, that kind of would have just meant like, you know, a weaker slash more normal uptrend with a healthy regular pullback, right? We're bouncing at the 50% line on the Fibonacci's, which is, is nice. That's what you want to see, okay? Because if we go below the 50%, then it's a reversal, right? Then, then now we're heading into possibly going into a reversal. Um, and, you know, we're starting a downtrend at least from our bullishness, okay? So right now, those levels are going to be 361 is, is where we need to find support at. All right. Um, our current major resistance on the Fibonacci's is 417. Um, and, you know, we've we've had some false breakouts above it. I'll zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see. And, you know, we have had some false breakouts up here. But we were not able to open and close above these levels. So that's what we're going to be looking for. All right. Is uh, that's how you can tell and get confirmation is focus on the chart that you're looking at. We're looking at the one hour chart and we're going to want to see these candles open and close above or below a level for you to play it. Right. Because you can you can short this or you can long it. Right. So you can be ready, be prepared and play both sides. Right. So what I would do is I would look at this and currently it's been a resistance level. So you could come up here and, and say, all right, hey, well, once we get to 417, I have two options. I can look at potentially shorting it, but I know that uh, we have, you know, broken past this resistance level a few times. Um, so, you know, it's a risky short, right? Because we could go above it. And if we go all the way up here to 443, you know, you don't want to be up there, close your position, and then it drop all the way back down as it did here, right? Um, that's why it was a false breakout. What I would look for is look for us to break above it and open and close the candles, uh, you know, above the candlestick. All right. Um, if we look here, um, like at these, right, where we're, we're catching support. And this is what I mean by, all right, now we're having candles open and close above this level. Right. We'll zoom in on this area of the chart right here. And you guys can see our level. All right. So, you know, we're opening, we're closing, we're staying above. Right. All these candlesticks are opening and closing above this one is is closing hitting our resistance level right so you know if you enter at 322 you can exit your position at 361 because you know that's your resistance on the fibonacci's all right and then here we see we're opening and closing below it on this one we open above it and then we close above it this one open and closes above it as well this one open and closes above it as well so this is all validation that okay hey we're still holding support here right we, don't, we haven't exited our position in this trade because at this moment, you know, um, we have not had a candlestick close below 361, right? That's what a lot of people and a lot of traders, when they say, look for validation, look for confirmation, this is it, right? You have to you look at the specific chart that you're looking at and you have to wait for those candlesticks to develop, right? You have to wait the whole hour. You can't panic. And if the first, you know, 10 minutes of this hour candle, we had a huge, huge drop and you, you sell your position, and 50 minutes later, it recovered and closed higher than where that candlestick opened. And then we uh, had a very huge bullish rally, bullish candlestick. And then we came up and hit our price target of 417. All right. So that's what we're going to be looking for is we're going to look to do that. We're going to look to open and start opening and closing above 417 now. And once we're above 417 and opening and closing uh, above there, holding this as a true valid support level, then our next take profit is going to be 488. Okay, that's uh, the, the highs of this trend. 
And once we do the same thing and we break out past 488, we're going to go up to 693 and then 1025. All right. Those are going to be our bullish price targets. Um, you know, if if you were to say TKAT was going to go to the moon, right? Um, these are the levels that you could look at, right? You could look at 693. All right. You could look at 1025. 1562. Those are the levels according to the Fibonacci's that we could hit if we do get above 488. For now, um, it's it's just going to be uh, I'm focusing on some more realistic price targets, right? Some more realistic intraday trades. Um, and, you know, once we get above that 488 level, we start opening and closing above 488. And uh, let's say we do have a short squeeze or something like that. We could go all the way up to 693 here and then 1025 and all the way up to 1562. Um, those are going to be your bullish price targets on TKAT. All right. So thanks for watching this video. Remember, none of this is financial advice. Um, this is all just a little bit of um, education, exposure to uh, some, you know, technical analysis and just um, to, you know, kind of give you guys some theories on how to work things. If you need help, right, and uh, you want to learn a little bit more, let's say about this, right, like, you know, Fibonacci's, for instance, or my supply and demand strategy. Um, I have some videos right here that you can watch that will help you guys out and, you know, some short explanations.